We hear from restaurant owners who say Seattle is serving up so many obstacles, it's becoming increasingly difficult to keep their doors open. They say rising rents, plus high labor costs, plus some city laws are all adding up to an environment that is just bad for business. But others tell King 5's Natalie Swaby the restaurant industry is not showing signs of slowing in Seattle. The way Paul Osher sees it, Seattle's dining scene is a delicate one. Got your pork belly hash. At Pork Chop and Company in Ballard, he's always searching for ways to make the numbers add up. To deal with rising rents and climbing labor costs. Everybody makes here over $20 an hour regardless. Right now, that's working here. But industry-wide, he says there's a looming issue. There are more and more restaurants um, closing. It's a tough business environment. There's no doubt about it. It sometimes feels like it's death by a thousand cuts. Owner Angela Koff feels it too. The day after construction started, we went down 50%. It's been a burden on business at her coffee house. Koff, who also has hot wire coffee and flying apron, sat beside other business owners like Sean Padilla. Tell me the name of the restaurant and how long you've been in business. Uh, Mission Cantina. The restaurant's been in business since 2005. Jean-Pierre Vidigan. One of the co-owners of both the Westie West Seattle and the Westie Roosevelt. Rita Dixon. I have the bridge in West Seattle and the point in Burien. And Dan Austin. I own Peel and Press in West Seattle and Flight Path in Burien. This year, they've seen long-standing restaurants call it quits. There's been bankruptcy filings in public post, a pizza place closing because of rising overhead and operating costs in Seattle, a sandwich shop blaming city council for putting small local businesses businesses on the brink of extinction. By show of hands, would you would you say yes, it has become increasingly difficult to do business in the city of Seattle? Oh, oh absolutely. absolutely. Tell me why, Sean. Well, I think just more and more people are in our pockets, <laughs> taking more from us. You have the sugary beverage tax that added $75 per box that we front. Leases have gone up, property taxes have been a big thing. Uh, especially with upzoning. I was a bartender and a server, and it was wonderful. I saved all my money for nine years to make this happen. And then when I start to open my own place, I get hit left and right like I'm the bad guy all of a sudden. It felt really uncomfortable. And Dan and Rita, you both have businesses in Burien. What if you noticed, what's the difference in Burien? Night and day. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I know most of the council folks in that area. The mayor came in on my two-year anniversary. Uh, when I went in for permits, I got 90% uh, of them on the same day. Yeah. Uh, in Seattle, I've waited over 90 days for permits. I mean, the minimum wage increase that we're about to see, how does that impact all of you? So, like, for me, I'm looking at $150,000 worth of increases in payroll. Where am I going to come up with that? I have to cut people. I have to figure out what I'm going to do. The most recent numbers from Department of Revenue show that over the course of five years, 1,149 Seattle restaurants have opened, 1,034 have closed. Jessen Farrell with Seattle-based think tank Civic Ventures is a former state legislator who proposed a statewide minimum wage increase in 2014. One of the things that we know is that when you put money in people's pockets, particularly workers, they put that money right back into those small businesses in our community. So the minimum wage isn't really the issue here. So raising prices has to be what, what you're looking at, all of you, right? Well, you do, but you it's scary. You it's, can't get there by raising No, prices. it's scary because you raise the price. And I've looked at, at I have five years of books, and I look at my, my ticket averages. And I've naturally had to raise prices, and it's scary every time you do it. Yep. And then you look at the ticket prices, and they're, in my case, they're stagnating because all of a sudden they're not having that second beer or that extra appetizer. Has the environment gotten so difficult that any of you have thought about actually closing in Seattle, not doing business here anymore? I am closing a business. She says a six-month city project made it hard for customers to get their coffee. After losing cash, she came to one conclusion. It was time to close the doors for good. The bigger message here is, is that with everything that's happened over the last few years, plus now physically restricting people from going to my space, that's kind of just like the last nail in the coffin. It's the kind of fate they've been able to fend off here so far. As we make a city that, that everybody wants to live in, that money has to come from somewhere. And unfortunately, it, it too often feels like it's coming off of small businesses. So for perspective, the National Restaurant Association says on average about 60,000 restaurants open every year, about 50,000 close. Justin Farrell with Civic Ventures says what she sees hurting small businesses is rising rents mm -hmm. 
and restaurants pushed into triple net leases. That's where they have to pay for the rent, the utilities and maintenance, and also property taxes. And she says it is a problem policy that policymakers really need to look at.